How you doing, Ralph here, Ralphie Customs, back again. Fucking black hand gang. Uh, I'm on the Triton, back on the Triton, so let's see what's up with that. <laughs> We're just roughly positioning, not roughly, the fucking headstock's where it needs to be. We know, look at this, look, this is how we do it. Don't tell anyone. We've got, I've measured from the floor to the bottom of the headstock, it's 32 inches, and I want seven inches of ground clearance. So that leaves 25 inches. Now, I thought 32 degrees, but I've changed that to 30 degrees, so we can change that accordingly. Um, and that's where we're at. I've run, what I do, I, I put a big block of fucking box section or angle iron or whatever's hand here along here. That represents the bottom of the jig. And we measure through, through here, down to that bottom reference, 25 inches. There you go. That's where that needs to be. To give you seven inches of ground clearance. Now, the standard bike, we've got five inches from my... Uh, Research dictates that there's five inches thereabouts on one of these from on one of these engines like from the, the Bottom of the headstock to the fucking front of the engine. So this engine could do with moving forward a couple of inch um, And I will look at how aesthetic That's gonna go, you know up to here. Maybe move it an inch. Don't know What I'm having to figure out is Where the rear sprocket is going to come in correlation to this when this is centered on the frame. Uh, sorry, on the jig. Uh, the back wheel needs to be in the middle. There might be an offset, but I don't know. I'm going to have to mock it up in the swinging arm and then make some spaces to hold the swinging arm on the upright that goes here in the right place. So I'm just in the process of building it up because there's not a fucking spacer. The sprocket side... So I don't know how far off this edge, how far off this edge the fucking sprocket is to take a reference to line up with the fucking chain, if that makes sense. So I've got to fuck about making some spaces, um, which seems to be a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to watching me make stuff on the lane. There's lots like it, lots don't. So. If you don't like it, sorry, but I need to do it. It's part of the fucking job. And if you do like it, then happy days, fill your boots. I'm going to make some spaces up to fit this uh, swing arm in the jig and to work out where I need to be. And I'll make Lee a spacer for the um, sprocket against the swing arm because he ain't got one. There's not one here. Right. You have a reprieve, you non-turning lovers. But the spaces were there. They were just the wrong way around on the uh, spindle and such. So now what I can do is measure from the inside edge of the swing arm to the sprocket. Yeah, see what we've got there, and then I can use that to align the drive. I can also measure from the center point of the wheel to the each side of the swing arm to see if it sits central. I'm hoping it does, because it's easier if it does. Um, and then I can measure across the swing arm um, from one side to the other, take out the Measurement of my upright post and make a space for each side accordingly. Happy fucking days. Having said that, the big fucking spindle is massive. I don't know if I'll have <coughs> the ends. Well, this is what I use to to space machine faced faced off bits of tubing. That's uh, 125 mil long, obviously. So, but in in between there and the spindle. We have, sorry, in between there and the upright, we have these, just locating the swing arm, is what I'm fucking about, trying to say. So, whatever size they are, they're 25s on this bit. So that fits in the swing arm, 
but that looks at least fucking 25, probably bigger that spindle. But I've sort of. <coughs> so we are having to machine some of these. The uh, this bit just sits in the swing arm or the actual plate or whatever, what have you, whatever we're using. Uh, and these need to be, this part needs to be 27.7 to match the spindle. I'm guessing 28 is probably the, the actual size, but I measured it at 27.7. Uh, and these are the biggest ones I've got at 25, so I'm just machining a bit of this leaded 12L14. 12L14L, or uh, we call it EN1A, in the good old, in the good old British land. So I'm just whacking a 12mm hole up to go uh, through the jig there. I've just bored it out, sorry, pre drilled it, pilot drilled it out, and then that's it to size. Um, and next up, I'm going to speed things up a little bit uh, and then machine this down to the 27.7 and then part it off and make a couple of top hats just like this. So I'll get on and do that off camera. Okay, fuckers, we uh, machined and spaced and aligned. And now the swing arm is central and the uh, the rear axle slots, if you like, are at the right height. Um, we just need to lift the front. We need to make space for the front. But the engine's in situ, as per Triumph original in the feather bed, or the original Bonneville, sorry, is that uh, we have the fins run parallel to flat. So we're 90 degrees, everything lines up, everything square, everything's blocked up. As always, I use angle iron, weld angle iron to the bench and that holds the engine, you know, put chocks and swags in place, look. Little, little spaces right in there, stopping it rotating and things to support it. Yeah, there and every fucking way, look, there's a piece there with angle iron welded on the front that sits around the oil filter, so this ain't moving. That's pretty fucking solid. I'm shaking it and the bench is not moving because the bench is bolted down, but <clears throat> nothing's moving. So now what I need to do is make a support for this to line up <clears throat> this centre with this centre. So whatever height that comes out at. There, look. Five and fucking, oh no, I'm reading it backwards. <laughs> eight and whatever, eight and five eighths or whatever it is. But I'll measure it properly and then we'll lift this up accordingly and put a piece of something in. It's a fucking good angle. I've been looking and checking and checking and looking and there's nothing I can do about that. There we go, so we're getting ready to dot to dot. And now we're cutting a couple of supports for the bottom frame rails because I'm going to jack them off the, the bench by the thickness of this box section. Um, so the sump and the um, oil filter are going to hang below the bottom of the frame rails by whatever that is. I think it's a fucking inch. Yeah, 25 mil because it's just going to look better. Yeah, because that's what it's all about. Yeah, so we cut those box sections. The, I'm going to stand the frame rails on, I've mocked up one, one frame rail. We're going to have to differ from the actual feather bed frame. Let's just move that forward a bit. So I've got room for that engine mount. Um, we're going to differ from the actual feather bed frame because I can't make those long sweeping bends. I've not got the gear to do that and I've not seen the gear to do that that fits what of the bender I've got and if they made one it'd be prohibitively expensive so we're gonna have let's try and show you this corner is going to be tighter than standard then it's going to go up and bend along the top of the engine we and then into the bottom of the headstock so it's going to do this for and this is going to be uh, different to standard feather bed because obviously it don't have the swing arm mount there. It says the swing arm mount there. 
but we can only work with what's been supplied, can't we? So it's going to have the look about it, but it's going to be uh, not going to be a feather bed frame. Obviously, because I'm not Mr. Norton, I'm like, you know what I mean? I was going to make it an inch and a quarter as well, but I'm not going to get the clearance. I'm going to really struggle with inch and a quarter to get the two rails in the top here, these rails, and then get the bottom rails to come in and round them. It's not going to happen. I would have had to blend them in and that kind of takes away from it a bit as well. So, we're going for inch. I'll get these two front rails cut um, and shaped to sit the headstock, suit the headstock, and then we'll, we'll look at putting this secondary bend in here, won't we? Right, we're a couple of hours later um, and I've been fucking about trying to make into a quarter fit and I can't. Um, and I've spoke to Ali and he's fine with inch, not fussed. As long as it's strong enough, well it fucking is. You can fire bullets out of this fucker. So, happy days. That's not bad. I'll put that one on the fucking jig. Wrong way up. Let's move it out of the way. We see others. There you go. So, well, I'm gonna have, let's just want this up one. I'll show you. First rail is gonna go something like that. <clears throat> so we need to blend it in at the end stock. Yeah. And we need to bend it up to 90 there. So we'll do that twice because we'll do it on the other hand for the other side. We've already got them bent there, look. There's a couple there to choose from, not that we're going to be uh, using both. Not that we need to choose, there's one already there ready to do it. <laughs> so yeah, happy days. So, without the glare of that fluorescent tube, oh, well, LED tube, sorry. You can see we have a rail in. In fact, we have two rail ins. Hey, <laughs> two rails in. Oosh. So, now we've got to work on the fucking this which is going to be the trickiest part although i might digress and uh, <coughs> get the front engine mount sorted which is going to be a slightly offset affair because the engine's offset to line up with the sprockets and uh, everything else thank you very much so yeah we've uh, made a good start yeah, let's just back up a bit like i say unfortunately i can't get these they're over 12 inch fucking radius these standard these bends are not tight bends um i looked at an engineering drawing 314 millimeters was either radius or diameter i'm guessing it was fucking diameter looking uh sorry radius looking at how big they are but i don't know i've not checked i've got nothing like that nothing so, so we're gonna have um the top rails are gonna run to the bottom of the straight bit of the headstock and down just like they do on the uh, on the feather bed frame they will have in the style of which is what i do in the style of i'm not mr norton and i don't have the tooling to do what they did hey so it's uh, several days later we've had a lot of trials and tribulations i'm pleased to say we're fucking there for the Cradle. Let's fuck it out of the way. Fucking petrol tank weighs a fucking ton. Ow. So, yeah, I've ended up doing this this rail through this other rail, if you like. It's not, is it? It butts up and then comes out the other side. If I brought it round, I could not get the tank to fit far enough back to miss the yokes once they're all built up. It was just fucking too close. It wouldn't have it, because I've only got so much width, because the tank is so fucking narrow at the front. I've studied and looked and looked and studied pictures and pictures and pictures of these, and there seems to be a lot that have like a gusset in here. It's not, the tube don't run around the outside of this tube. There's like a gusset in it. So I figure if I do this compromise, it still harks back to that style. Yeah. But it actually fucking works with that tank, which has been the pain in the arse. But we're there now. That's the fucking profile of it. Look. 
happy fucking days. I'll, uh, I've got this other the piece to make for the other side, this little bit. And then I'm going to look at putting some cross pieces in and getting engine mounts. And then onto the rear section. Okay, welcome back, friends. Hey, and if you if it's your first time here, just welcome. Um, right, we have the rails in. Yeah, we also have the cross braces in. Okay, here we go. Cross brace, cross brace, cross brace, cross brace, cross brace. That's still up. Um, now what I need to do is work out the engine mounts and. They're a long way away from the frame on the back here. Over here. Look. So, we're going to have to make some plates up. Obviously, we make plates up, what am I saying? But I was thinking of having them fixed on this side. And removable on the other side. Because if my estimations are correct, the engine, there's enough room underneath to slide the engine this way. And then tip the top out to get it out. Because it's tight. It's fucking tight. It's... There's not enough gap here to lift it up to clear the sumping filter shit. It might be a sumping filter off to get it out, job, but you know, I'm not trying to make that. I'm trying not to make that even. I'm also thinking about this whether I need to make a head steady mount. I'm definitely not, if you're watching, Ali. We're not having that fucker. In my estimation, where is it there? That. No, mate. You don't need uh, one, two, Three, four, five. No, don't need five fucking mounts. Four's plenty. You probably get away with three. With the two back ones and the, that one, but we'll stick it somewhat on here. I need to put another little piece in there. And have some triangles or something. I need to make something. Something that looks nice. Um, and that is in keeping. They just plated them. In the old days, they used big sheets of fucking stainless or mild steel and just filled the fucker in with holes in it like. Uh, uh, I'm not sure I want to go that way. It's time for a brew and we'll have a look. I'll join you shortly. Quick update time. So, I've turned up these bosses with a 12mm clearance hole. I was going to film it, but then I got carried away and didn't, so tough. Um, and we're going to use those for the engine mount and absolutely definitely on this one and we're going to have a fixed mount this side and this one's going to unbolt so you can fuck the engine off out i'm still thinking about this whether to make sorry this whether to make a some fucking isn't bob kingdom brunel type fucking bolt on bolt off thing for it um what i'm definitely going to do is put these corner look do you like me fucking cad my cardboard AD design. This th this one's going to be quite a bit more pronounced than that. Uh, and that one's going to be about like that with some holes in. So just to smooth it out, beef it up. Bob's your auntie. I might even fucking whack a couple in here with the hole in, like just to just to emulate. So it's got a bit more in keeping with. So next up is to get these engine mounts together and sorted. Um, when I've got some tacked on or whatever, you can rejoin me and we'll see how we're going to do the bolt on. So we're back on the CAD bench, <laughs> making up, that's the fixed one, there. So it's got a plate on, it welds it to the frame. This one's going to have something like that, with a, a threaded fastener, top and bottom. I'm going to clean that up a bit, but we're getting there, you know. You can see that, yeah. Uh, the idea. Right, I know. So we've roughed out this. It's going to be welded, so that's fine. But this one needs to be a, a clearance for the frame. So we're going to drill it out on a big on the milling machine. Look. We're going to drill the fucker out. We'll go in with the. Start it up. We'll go in with the quarter pilot. Like so. Got it stood on a couple of parallels and clamped well in the vice. Nicely centered. And then slow things down and steadily take it out to one inch. Uh, we might need to do a bit of fettling and filing just to give us a bit more clearance on it, but I don't have an inch and an eighth bit or anything like that, which is what I could do with, so I think that'll do it. Or I could, I might try an old saw actually. I'm going to have a look over here, look, I fucking hold on. 
If I've got an inch hole saw, I can use that. <clears throat> there you go. There's one. 25 mil. He's got a chunk missing out of the fucker though. But it might still do it. And they throw enough, they give a bit of a clearance, so. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I really fancy this. I reckon this is gonna do it nicely. So let's fucking just go through there with a the pilot for that with a guide drill. And we'll start cutting. And I'll just steadily, very steadily work my way through. Hmm. A little bit at a time. It's smoky joke. We're only going through a quarter plate. I don't think it's even that, it might be five mil, so it's just over one turn of my handle on the jacking off. There you go. Nearly there. I think we're about to break through. So need a bit more lube, that's what we need. Because that's what separates this from the animals. Look how fucking hot that is. That is desperately trying to burn that out, isn't it? No, oh, my bad. Too much pressure. Not enough cutting. I'm hoping that it gets us where we need to be. I just moved the parallel so that they're actually supporting the piece properly and bubbed your answer. There we go, we're through. Happy days. And there we go, that's that one done. Fixed plate this side, bolt on this side. Look. That'll undo from there and drop away, leaving a couple of bosses on the frame. I'm going to do the same with the other ones. I've got some pre made bosses that I've just done. Um, and then I'll try and work out what's fucking happening here because I'm not happy with this. I don't, I'm not sure what to do about that. I'm going to see what's what. I'm relying on this gap once the swing arm's out to get the engine back and out as well to a degree. I mean, this gives us clearance there. We'll see what happens. Sorry, see what happens with that one. Um, and the bottom one, I'm not comfortable. Having such a, a long fucking bit of summit in there, it's a bit of fucking pigs in space. But let's see what I can come up with. So, with that done, what I need to start doing is making the engine bolts because I've not got any. A 30 rod's not going to fucking do it, is it? So, what I'm going to do is use this. Uh, I've got some 12 mil stainless, as I think I've just mentioned earlier. I'm gonna, Work the lengths out of this shit. Go on. And uh, just like so. So we'll have that through there with the thread on it. Poking out, enough for a nut. Yeah, so we'll have all of that, plus twice what's sticking out there. And we'll thread it just back from that on the lathe. So I need to make up one, two, three at least four and work out what I'm doing with that so it's over to the lathe right brethren you join me back at the lathe so get it warmed up I'm just gonna face the end of this up Ooh. don't like it does it a bit of a squealer there that'll be all right and now I'll get a chamfer on it. Like so. So, then what I need to do is mark off the length of thread that I want. I'm just gonna eyeball it at that lot. We'll call that level, so turn the DRO on. Zero. 
the Y or the Z, whichever it is, I never remember. And we want 24 mil. Which is about there. So, put a little mark. There we go. Now we can bring in the tail stock, we can slow things right down. Or we can bring in the tail stock with a diode in it. Like so. If you can see that alright. Put a bit of lube on. And hopefully. Mm. Bob's your aunt when it comes to uh, getting this cutting the thread. I've had mixed mixed results with this, to be fair. Especially on stainless, so see what happens eh? Keep winding it, giving it a bit of pressure, and eventually it should just take it from me. Which it's trying to do, I guess. Right, stop that and reverse it. A bit more lube. It's quite a lovely looking thread. See how it takes it, look. There we go. So, up to the mark. Reverse it away. And we're there. Happy days. And here's the front one. The back one's there in place. Look, ready to sort the back of the tree out. Here's the front one ready to replace that bit of stud in that I put in there. Um, so, there you go, you get the fucking dokey, pop pickers. We've been busy. We've uh, put that proper bolt in there, the, the stud, if you like. And we've made a rear mount. We've done this rear mount in a fucking is some bog Kingdom Brunel type action method with a removable dish uh, that's welded onto the bike and that unbolts for the other side, much the same as this. Um, and the same for the bottom, done the bottom one as well with a removable. Now, that is gonna more than fucking hold everything in place given that, you know, this one's fucking super strong. And this one's fucking super strong. Okay. So, nothing is fucking going anywhere. But I'm now gonna do this top one, which is gonna be something a bit different. <clears throat> I'm gonna bring these two together and clamp it somewhere, fix it somewhere here. Yeah. I'm gonna make a triangle and that'll fuck off. That'll be a removable head stedder. I, I might drop it down. That might be a better way, but. I'm certainly not going to use that one. It's fucking hell, we don't need that as well. And that'll be all right, cunt, to get done. So, I think we'll drop this down so it's not so fucking obvious from the side. Um, and then we're on to making some strengthening gussets yeah, for around the uh, swing arm pivot. And these bits there to to soften that corner and stiffen it up a little bit, just in this five mil, five mil plate or eight plate, whatever I'm using. It don't need to be anything heavy, you know. So I'll see you when I've done that. I'll get that done, get that top mount done, get them plates cut out, get them drilled, get them tacked in, and then it's uh, off the fucking bench then onto its wheels. Yeah. I've took the liberty of starting some of the weld up. None of it is fucking heavy duty. The, the heaviest thing on there is the fucking headstock. So I'm not too worried about pre eating. We're only welding uh, 2.4 mil, whatever it is, 14 gauge to itself, like. So I do weld prep and leave a gap. Hence, there look. So we can get plenty of fucking peno like. Oh yeah, we're about there. We're about there for phase one. Um, did I think you're like my monoshock <laughs> strut? We're, I'm not sure what we're doing with the seat. Lee's bringing up a seat thing, um, and then from there we're going to have to fucking work something out for a shock of Rina Rooney, isn't we? That he's not got. So it's going to be fucking on a dolly trolley for a little while, I think. Or props on this fucking that with the front end in. About Willie. So yeah, we've just made this little bracket. It's fucking a red hot with a 10mm hole and that's gonna affix to that. 
can I pick it up? Oh yeah, just about. If you're gentle with it, don't grip it hard. But that sits on the frame the other way up. Up, upsensy downsy. Under there with that bot on. I'm just gonna take this head there. Head steady, but do I do a fucker there? Do you know? Can't fucking decide. But they're a nice thing. Just made that. There we go. Pretty, and there we go. There she is, the swinging. Uh, what I'll do now off camera is get the back wheel assembly in. Get the front forks and front wheel. Fucking, I've got to put them together, so. Bit of a faff. Um, and get sat on the fucking ground. Ready for phase two, and it's just uh, leaving somewhere not too much in the way for now. Because it's going to be a little while before I get back on it. But uh, I'll surmise once it's on its wheels. And there we have it, pop pickers. Fucking hell, oh. Can't really get far enough away to show it in all its fucking splendour. But I'm well happy. Sitting nice. We've got a dummy shock thing at the back because, you know. We ain't got the rear sub frame or any shockers or fuck all. But that is one frame. Wait, oh, sorry about that. Fucking hell, fumble, fumble. That is one frame snorted. Yep. Yeah. I will move it to a safe place in the workshop and endeavour to crack on. All it leaves is for me to thank you for watching, as always. If you like what you see, please give me a sub and a thumbs up. It really, really makes a lot of difference if you leave a little comment or a smiler. Follow along to see how it comes on. And thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Lots of love. To you.